Um, but we have to see that the hit points of these chunky single prizes are just still so difficult. The good news for John is Zach led out with a Roaring Moon, not a Fluttermane. So John can immediately use the rescue board and retreats this Radiant Greninja going, going straight into Comfey here. And it's going to begin with Flower Selecting. Yeah, that Flutter Main is so bad against Comfey. It turns off the ability. You need your Flower Selecting to draw cards and to get cards into the Lost Zone. That's what we see here. You look at the top two cards of your deck. One goes in your hand, one goes in the Lost Zone. And then we've got those key numbers for the Lost Zone. You get four in the Lost Zone. Cramorant attacks for free. Seven, you can use Mirage Gate. Ten, then you can use Sableye to drop damage counters. But it's a slow start from John Mostawi here. And we are just going over to Zach. And I think Zach has a poker gear, and that could completely change the complexion of this turn. We know Roaring Moon can start putting on the pressure early with that Vengeance Fletching. We would need a Professor Sada in order to attach one Darkness Energy from the discard pile and then manually attach. If we can get through this Confey, John's start wasn't ideal, so you could initiate some great pressure here. And it looks like Zach has a few ways to thin the deck of energy. I think there's another Earthen Vessel already in the hand. So John will, uh, sorry, Zach will do a lot of thinning here and then has poker gear to sort of end up the turn. Oh, there's already a starter in the hand, Ross. Oh, that is fantastic. That is going to be a great start here. Of course, Avengers Fletchling, you don't need any ancient cards in the discard. It does 70 base. Kumpay has 70. Yep. And it's not just taking a prize here. You're saying to your opponent, your start was terrible. The first thing you're going to do when I pass over to you is use Flower Fletching on that Kumpay. So if I take that away, you've still got access to concealed cards with Greninja, but now all of a sudden you can't flower select with Comfey. You've only got one card in the Lost Zone, and you can get, especially against these low hit point Pokemon, so I can take prizes quickly. Now we see Pokegear coming around. What do we see? Explorer's Guidance, it mm. looks like. I think Zach really just wants to take other cards out of the deck so he can use um, the Sada and then hit more Pokemon. He just wants more Pokemon in play right now because this Roaring Moon getting early pressure, fantastic. But you're going to need more than just this one Pokemon out there right now. So Zach is going to be hunting for Ball Search from the Pokestop and this Sada. Yeah, he's got the Pokestop. Looks like that's coming into play. And it looks like we're using it. Discard the top three cards of your deck. Items go back. It's an energy and a tool, which is not an item under the new rules, remember. Two more ancient cards in the discard is fine. Energy is not the end of the world, but you would kind of like to use that Sada at some point. Now, Zach has a decision. Do you take, well, there's your answer. <laughs> Do you just draw the three cards rather than the six and hope to find more Pokemon from these three cards? Fortunately for Zach, oh, wow, three great hits there. Your ace spec. You found Coridon and you found a Nest Ball. That's exactly what Zach's been searching for. You said he needed Pokemon and he is absolutely getting Pokemon as well as that Secret Box. And Secret Box can be good in the mid to late game, but it seems like a very good early game card. Really get going. Now, you do have your Stadium of Choice, but you can go and get a whole bunch of stuff there. Secret Box, discard free, and you get a Stadium, and you get an item, and you get a supporter card and you get a tool it's a lot of different things going on here all at the same time yeah it's a really interesting card because it provides so much value for you but in the same process you're able to pitch even more of your ancient cards so it seems to have great synergy within the archetype as Zach is going to manually attach to this roaring moon it looks like taking out John's only Comfey right now is a great start. Yeah, and then we've got the one. dragon type Coridon hitting the board, nailed it. And we go back over to John, and all we've got is Radiant Greninja with a rescue board, nothing else for the time being. Is that free Mirage Gate in hand? Lots of Mirage Gate. I do think we have Colrus at the very least, though. So John's going to start things off with a five card dig here with the Colrus and start fueling this Lost Zone. We have Nest Ball in hand. Ooh, Roxanne seems like you have to keep it, even though it's not great for now. You have a switching piece. The last water energy that is available. Yeah. I mean, you've got free Mirage Gate in hand, but that Mirage Gate is such a good card. You never really want to lost zone any of them if you can help it. Yeah, this is rough. Looks Gets rid of the Roxanne. Oh, this is not... one of your crucial defensive supporter cards in a matchup like this, where the ancient deck is going to really amass a large hand size with multiple Sada. It now is. John has no check to that hand size from Zach. But you need Comfey, you need the water energy, yeah. and then you really don't want to get rid of your Mirage Gate, and I suppose that's the decision. So you can at least bench a Comfey. Rescue Ball will let you retreat yeah. into it, so you can use Flower Selecting to get one more card. This will put four in the Lost Zone and activate Cramorant's ability to attack for free if you can find it, which there is a Nest Ball in hand, so you should be able to. And I think that was a switch as one of the options, so we are going to get rid of another Comfey here. 
So we can simply switch and get this Cramorant attack in. Even though you're not KOing this Roaring Moon, it's still really handy to just put some prep damage in. Because as we know, John can use Greninja to finish off this damage or look to use Sableye. They can eventually take it out of the prize cards. So, ooh, looks like he's eyeing up the Confei rather than the Cramorant here. Just might keep just drawing cards, you think? I think keep drawing cards and hope you can cram it a little bit later. You have had a very bad start. One of the other things that John does play in this deck is Iron Hand, and it's really awkward in this matchup because pretty much everything on Zach's side of the board is just outside the range of Iron Hand. So getting some prep damage from yep. a cram would enable that. I kind of like getting a Saber Line, dropping a few damage counters on each to bring them all into range, but that is a <laughs> couple of turns away at this yeah. stage. And let's not forget, Ancient Boost Energy Capsules can make that plan a little bit more foggy as we are going to see the poker stop you do pick up a switch cart that's pretty handy and i think we just have to use spit innocently here for pressure because you cannot let zach just run away with the game just by simply announcing easy 70 damage prods john's going back into the deck with another nest ball here what's he going to be going for here he's got he's i think he's out of comfy at this point is he not mm, no there's one more there's one more is that what he's gone for he has gone to now we're out of comfy here and yeah, I think getting to five in the Lost Zone makes a good amount of sense, so you can just chorus your way there next turn and start unlocking those Mirage Gates. There's so many of them in the hand for John. Yeah, you need to start getting Mirage Gate on board. They're literally all four are in hand. There goes your Forest Seal Stone, but you've got a Chorus's Experiment, so yeah. that was an easier choice. Here comes a switch into a Cramorant and a Spit Innocently for 110 damage into the Roaring Moon. It's not KO'd yet, it's pretty close. Yep, this is what we were both saying, Ross, trying to eye up future damage output from either John's Greninja or the uh, Iron Hands. So definitely relevant damage here. Let's see what Zach can piece together. Picks up the Reddit Greninja of his own here. Pretty much the only draw engine Pokemon within Zach's deck. Otherwise, it's just looking for Pokestop and Professor Sardis to cycle through. Yeah, there's a bunch of options, but you don't always necessarily want to go blind poker stop because it can get a little bit awkward. We see a couple of energy coming out here. And we are, and then Zach's already gone through a decent chunk of his deck here. That is starting to get a little bit thin. Yep. I mean, you only need four cards in the, four ancient cards in the discard to care of the Crammer, and I'm fairly sure he's I'm pretty there. sure we're there. Should be yeah. long past <laughs> that at this point. If not, we have the secret box to push us over the edge. So yeah, we, we know that Zach's got a very good turn lined up just by virtue of this ace spec that's currently in hand. So he's just going to keep building up his board as best as possible. And it can seal away a darkness energy. So I imagine Zach's plan is to try and use a Sada again this turn. It's always good. If, I mean, the ideal situation here is that you solder onto a couple different Roaring Moon, essentially make them all single prize Pokemon, so that you don't have the pressure of having to get it when you, you know, when you're going to attack. I have to have it right now. <laughs> John's going to have a read of the secret box. It's not a commonly <laughs> played card. Uh, but just refreshing the memory, uh, Zach is going to throw away a couple ancient cards, which is going to fulfill that quota for the Vengeance Fletching to get a KO in the active here, whilst also picking up. Well, an ancient boost tool. energy capsule. There's your supporter card, the Professor Sada, as expected. What uh, item card do we want to grab here? Maybe Super Rod, if we're worried about any other cards. Maybe just, yeah, more access to supporters <laughs> is reasonable also. And he actually threw away a Pokestop yeah. to use the card and then brings it right back because I believe that's the only stadium he actually plays. Both players are just playing Pokestop here, actually. <laughs> so that's going to be sticking around unless we see some lost vacuum. Yeah, that's not necessarily um, the best pull there, but of course, you got your Sada, you got your Poke Gear for future Sada, you got your Ancient Boost Energy Capsule, which it's, it's a weird one with the maths. Like, it still won't take you out of Greninja range, and it won't take you out of Sableye range, but it will then mean there's, you know, six fewer damage counters to go elsewhere from the Sableye. But there's only one Roaring Moon down, so we get another energy onto the Coridon here. Not something we see attacking too often in the deck, but with a bunch of low HP Pokemon, yeah. that is an option. Yeah, I think because of the matchup, you know you don't need to ration your ancient cards so heavily. You can weave these Pokemon in, just continuing that chain of attackers. It's going to be the most important thing for Zach because he's already up on prizes. He's going to go up another at the end of this turn. So just has to really keep on chugging with these single prizes as we're going to see a poker stop here. Works out pretty nicely, gets rid of a Flutter Main and picks up a couple item cards along the way. A Nest Ball and a Super Rod. 
So I think Zach's in a really favorable position, has a backup attacker ready to rumble. Oh, that's the nice. Roaring Moon have a lot of hit points right now. He's done pretty much everything in his power to build this board nicely. And his attackers are looking good. He takes the KO there onto the Cramorant with the Roaring Moon. He's got a Coridon with enough energy on right now to attack. He's got a yep. Roaring Moon that just needs one energy to attack. So his next couple of attackers are already essentially up and rolling, and it means that you can start worrying about other things now. Of course, with the Coridon, it's 30 damage for each of your ancient Pokemon in play right now it only does 90 so if you're going after something like a radiant greninja you might need a little bit more as john plays a chorus's experiment which we might have seen coming i think there's some easier choices here at last you can get rid of buddy buddy poffin i think there's actually no targets within the deck to search here and then it's going to be a switch cart hitting the lost zone and john has now made it to the crucial seven counts in the lost zone especially because john's been holding on to mirage gates Basically from turn one. So. All four Mirage <laughs> yeah, yeah. have been there for a couple of turns at this day. Yeah, and I feel like that's going to be part of the strategy now. We're going to see a Super Rod here, grabbing back this Cramorant. Also going to grab Darkness Energy, as well as Water Energy. Yeah, when you've got four Mirage Gate in hand, you really want all of your energy in the deck. Now, there is a Roaring Moony X in hand that you can potentially have a play with here. That can do some big damage and tank a hit, which is quite nice. Wonder what else he's got in it's terms tough. of his... Yeah, like I said, you want to be using Mirage Gate for Radiant Greninja, but yeah. it's just not available thanks to the prize cards of John. That would actually be really big right now. It would get the KO on the Roaring Moon. The 90 would be perfect. And then you could also get some prep damage onto another Pokemon for Sableye or for your yeah, Iron Hands or whatever it might be. But you're right, there's two water in the prizes. That is not ideal. You've actually played enough that you can prize one water and it's not a big deal. Mm you can't prize two so you've got roaring moon is an option blood it's moon be... ursa luna is an option iron hands raiko it's awkward because you know that zach's already got 10 ancient cards in that discard pile and two more will hit the discard pile thanks to this knockout that john probably has to take here so you know that this iron hands isn't that likely to tank a turn and that's really what you need if you're going to play catch up here as john but we just don't really have many other good options, so we probably still have to use Ampy very much here. Yeah, you will take two prizes. That prep damage is enough, even with the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule. But then, I mean, if you said there's 10 cards in there, go up to 12, that's 190. So four cards extra in the discard that are Ancient will be enough to KO the Iron Hand. And, yeah. you know, this Lost Box deck, they don't play all of these HP boosting tools we see in some other decks. So you just kind of got to hope your opponent doesn't get enough cards in the Lost Zone. 16 is the magic number, and if there's already 12, or there will be by the end of this right. turn, that is that's not that tall a task, honestly. Yeah, maybe even if you can work towards Lost Vacuum, perhaps, and just remove an Ancient Booster for a minus 10 damage, that could be worthwhile. These are the fine margins, because you are a little bit behind right now. But John not going to go into a Comfe and just going to accept that Amp very much is going to end his turn here by the looks of things. And you've got to watch that Pokestop. That Pokestop can get some discarding yep. going on as well. It's going to make Jack's task a little bit easier. So John does get the two prize KO there. Does take a water yep. energy, crucially. So Greninja is now switched on. And now we're over to Zach, who... I mean, the fact that we see Roaring Moon go straight into the active tells me he thinks he's going to be fine. I think we literally just heard Zach say on the table, let's see if we get there. <laughs> <laughs> and an Ultra Ball pickup is a very good start. Oh, that's great. Couple Ultra Ball in hand, couple Ancient Cards already for Zach. He should not find it too difficult. I believe there's 12 Ancient Cards currently in the discard pile. So as you said, Ross, we'd be at 190 damage. So we're looking for four modifiers here. Four ancient cards, I should say. Yeah, each of which does count as a modifier, though. Yeah. So I'll totally accept that. <laughs> here comes a nest ball for a fl uh, sorry for a Roaring Moon. That's yeah. going to hit the bench. And that's generally what we see with these ancient decks. They are going to try and just go Roaring Moon. It literally just gets better as the game goes <laughs> on, as you get more and more ancient cards in the discard. Each Roaring Moon hits a little harder than the one that came before it, and it's going pretty nicely. And at 100. 40 HP is so annoying because your Pokemon hit 120, 110 over or over on the Lost Zone Ooh, side. Oh, that's nice. Oh, okay. One Ancient card comes to the hand and an Ancient Booster hits the discard pile. And that gets us to three away. And I think Zach should be able to piece the rest together from what's already in hand. So I think there's no issue for Zach to take this response KO on Iron Hands and go 
already down to two prize cards remaining. With two attackers potentially already on the board, it will need a Darkness Energy or a Professor Sada, but if you yeah. play Professor Sada, it goes into mm -hmm. this card pile. Here's another two. We see that Earth and Vessel discarding a Coridon as part of the requirements to play it. That puts us up to 15, so we are one away at this stage from Zach getting the KO and I mean, there's an Explorer's Guidance. Is yeah. that in hand or is yeah. that the deck? We're looking at the deck now, but he does also have one copy in hand. Lovely, so that would do it. Yeah. Even also if has you the hit Kieran in, It has the Kieran in hand. You could just use that as the damage mod to get over this Iron Hands EX if you had to. That's oh. a spicy one-off copy that Zach's choosing to play in the deck list. What do you think of that, Ross? I love Kieran. I don't love it this turn. You should be able to get there without it. Right. Save Kieran for when you really need to stretch over. Maybe you need to recover some of your ancient cards or something along those lines. Yeah. I love Kieran when you absolutely need it, like we saw from Pram earlier on in the tournament. And we pick up Countercatcher and Boss's Orders. Not too much help, but it might unlock your Poker Gear. Zach can't have that many cards remaining in the deck. He's looking for Sada. Sada will because, be perfect. Yeah, then you can get to work on your next Roaring Moon. Does whiff here, so we'll just take an Explorer's Guidance instead. You can still fire this off quite happily, but you are just falling a little bit more prey to any hand disruption that John has. The good news is for Zach is that the only Roxanne in John's deck is already in the Lost Zone. So this isn't going to be a huge issue for Zach, I don't think, in the long run. No, and he does have the Darkness Energy in hand ready for the Roaring Moons. You don't have to play Asada. Well, you really want to, so you get the energy, and then you essentially get both of your Roaring Moon up and rolling. They both have yeah. two energy if you hit Asada but there's a large handful of cards. There comes the Explorer's Guidance. You're giving up on Professor Sada, but playing that card is the 14th one. Mm -hmm. So that will mean that you are, all, sorry, the 16th one, which means you are already there. So we are good. And actually, that's about the biggest thing in, Zach's, uh, in John's deck, isn't it? Yeah, I think this is the chunkiest Pokemon that he can represent, apart from Blood Moon, Ursa Luna EX, with that 260 uh, hit points. So Zach's doing a great job of getting up to the top end of his damage output with so many of his ancient cards already found their way to the discard pile. He is going to just take the KO here on Iron Hands EX, going down to two prize cards remaining. We're just confirming here with the amount of ancient cards in there, but I'm pretty sure Zach's done the math, and yes, does check out. How can John wiggle out of this position? They're already looking at the Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX that's in hand as I was going to say, that seems to be. But the thing is, now this is where Kieran would come in great. Yeah. Because now you need the Kieran to really jump over that 260, and that would work perfectly. Although next turn, if this Roaring Moon goes down, next turn Zach will need a Professor Sada because that Coridon is not doing it. Coridon is great in the early game. It's great for Comfey and Cramorant and those kind of Pokemon. It is not going to get there on these EXs. John's going to have to get a little tricky, I think. Putting down this Blood Moon Ursaluna just makes you lose so easily, I feel. Yep. It can't, it just can't feel right. I think you have to get a bit more tricky with some counter catcher plays, perhaps. There's Prime Catcher in hand, I believe. Um, yeah, so there may be a trapping play you can try and make, but with that one Roxanne loss zoned, I feel like you've already shut so many doors here for comeback plays. It was just such an awkward chorus early on in this game. It really was. It's not like John wanted to get rid of no, the Roxanne. There were not. just other cards that were needed right there and then. But Zach has kind of cruised to four prizes taken. And now John's sitting there and he's like, well, I haven't really got many good attackers on the board right now, by which I mean none. <laughs> and Zach's kind of already set up quite nicely. He needs to take one more prize. What I really want to do is Blood Moon Ursa Luna. But if I play that and it gets KO'd, that's it. I'm done. And you can start using Greninja, but Greninja is great like three turns ago, where you're putting 90 on two different Pokemon. Here is the catch up, uh, see, prime catcher play, yeah. which might be the stalling play you called out here, Joe. I think we kind of have to do this. John wants to try and use Greninja over a couple turns and deal with both of Zack's Roaring Moon at the same time. And that could really be one of the only ways you could slow Zack down here. Possibly even has to target the Coridon simply because it currently has energy cards. But because its damage output is so low, once you've taken out the Roaring Moon, that would be my selection, I think. Yeah, I think if you can take out both Roaring Moon, you're kind of putting Zach on a one-turn clock here. You're saying, look, both your Roaring Moon have 90 on. I can hit them again next turn, and then I'm going to win. Do we see... Oh, there is an Ancient Boost Energy Capsule on, though. There currently is, yeah. Which but does... There are Lost Vacuum in John's list that we haven't played yet, so... You would need that, because... Oh, we are going after the, the Coridon. We're going after Energy here. I think that, again, I feel like it helps Zach in the long run. As we know, Zach has Kieran in hand, so can just use the switching effect if need be this turn. 
You can, of course, attach retreat if you would prefer, but I feel like getting energy on your currently unattached Roaring Moon would also be handy. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm following Zach's train of thought and it feels very logical right now. Use your Kirin as a switching effect. Sometimes we've seen Penny in these lists in the past, but Zach's taking a more aggressive strategy. Is going to use the switch effect though. And straight away, John says, I cannot win from this position. Zach was getting in the perfect spot to just chain attack to get over the line. And John didn't want to see any more. Only real strategy. All of your attackers are inefficient to the high hit points of these ancient Pokemon. Oh, and Zach's led the Fluttermane as well. Oh, no. It only gets worse for John in this game too right now. The Midnight Fluttering shutting down the Confei. So rough. Zach is going to be able to Earthen Vessel away a Coridon early and start thinning some of these Darkness energy. There's a real argument here for Zach to not put any additional Pokemon in play this turn. Or if he does put any Pokemon, just more Fluttermane. So you can play around an Iron Bundle from John and completely shut down the Flower Selecting altogether. Yeah, and that's the thing. This can be a, a lower way for Zach to play the game, but Hex Hurl, it's not a great attack, right? 19 and 20 to the bench, or two damage counters sure. for free energy. It's a bit meh. But the whole point is you're blocking your opponent from doing anything and over a couple of turns that is going to build up quite nicely and you can still use professor sada to get it rolling a bit faster because you are an ancient pokemon yep. when it goes down it will still get any future roaring moon to do a little bit of extra damage yep. so yeah i'm down with double flutter main here joe that sounds good zach is going to arch ball away an ancient boost energy capsule as well as another Coridon. So that might be a sign we're still going to get maybe even the Greninja in the mix here, just so you can draw more cards. We picked up a couple energy from the early Earthen Vessel, so Zach isn't going to go pure Flutter main, but if he draws into a second Flutter, you can still play around Iron Bundle that way. Yeah, Iron Bundle's got that ability that forces your opponent to switch their active Pokemon. So if they've only got one Flutter main, it will get it out of the active. Yeah. Two Flutter main, and you can just switch between them. And sure, your opponent can use their Prime Catcher, or their only boss's orders to get around Fluttermane, <laughs> but that still feels like a win for you if that happens. Yeah, and uh, just such low counts, it would be a low odds play that you're sort of working around. Zach here could quite contently just attach to the Fluttermane this turn whilst banking an energy in the discard pile for Professor Sada next turn. And he does pick up the Ooh, Nest Ball that's good. and a Roaring Moon. I think it's perfect opportunity to weave in the Flutter now. Yeah, I think you can bench the Roaring Moon. You've already got a catcher or a, you've already got yeah. a prime catcher or boss target. So you can bench anything else you like as long as you put down a second Flutter main. That is going to be the big difference. Now, there is a Roaring Moon. Yeah, so, here. so the only reason to not go second Flutter main is that they both have 90 hit points. So it could open up John for Radiant Greninja down the line. When he eventually yes. gets to seven, and as we know, the Lost Zone archetypes play Lost Vacuum. So we, even if Zach used the Ancient Booster Energy capsules, John could still undo that. So. I think just accepting that it's a win to have led the Fluttermane in the first place and make John sort of go round about the houses to deal with this Pokemon is already good enough. Yeah, forcing some extra resources to get around it. It does mean that the Iron Bundle will get around it, but of course you're forcing your opponent to go and get the Iron yeah. Bundle first. Well, John at least has a Colorus, and Zach said exactly the same thing at the table. <laughs> at least you got Colorus, <laughs> so you can play the game. Yeah, we do see uh, Comfey in there as well. Of course, Comfey is not live right now. You have to get the Iron Bundle or the Prime Catcher or the boss's yeah. orders to get that Fluttermane out the active. So it's a super odd and a Comfey. Here is the Nest Ball. You've got to think it's for Iron Bundle here, unless you're going to Comfey and get Iron Bundle later. No, you are not. <laughs> it is going to be Iron Bundle. John's having a look straight away and thinking, yeah, at least I've got this. I have to assume this will be the choice, yeah. and it is that Hyper Blower ability. A fantastic Pokemon in this archetype when you just have so many Super Rod in the deck list and your damage output can be so tricky with your different Pokemon. Sometimes just forcing a big Pokemon out of the way gives you so much opportunity to weave in Iron Hands, to weave in your Radiant Greninja, even Sableye. doesn't matter what you're pushing out the way if you're just able to sprinkle lots of Pokemon at the same time. So the opportunity to use this Pokemon so frequently in a game makes it so valuable as a one count and not just for Fluttermane. No, I agree entirely. And there's so many times you don't actually really want to gust up anything specific. Yeah. You just want whatever is active out the way. If they're really big, if they're blocking you, whatever, that is what it does so nicely. So now John can start flower selecting here, getting an extra card in hand and an extra card into the Lost Zone. He's going to keep the Cramorant and have to get rid of the rescue board here. John can attach retreat out of this Comfey initially, but I don't think it has any switching cards. So it has to find a switching out here if we are going to launch a spit innocently this turn. This is a big two cards. 
It's another Comfey and a Colrus, so I think we're having to pass this turn again. And that's two Comfey in the Lost Zone now? Yeah. It's not ideal, especially if you're passing back pass. to Zach and you know Zach is now going to be taking the first prize. And we will need a Professor Sada because there's no energy on the board, but as long as you hit that, and oh look, he's hit that. And th look, you play multiple, you play three copies of Boat Gear 3.0, you play Secret Box, Ooh. you play a full four. What's it, what you see, Nice Joe? pick up of the Earthen Vessel from the three cards for Zach. Nice. So we can immediately again initiate the pressure. A Vessel going to get rid of another Coridon, three of them already discarded <laughs> for Zach. It's really just not your ideal attacker. You weave them in when you have to, but it's really all about the Roaring Moon here. And Zach can pick up a couple Darkness Energy, so we can get a manual attachment and also continue to draw cards. Working out very similar to that game one here, where Zach is going to start the prize race and uh, have Moon set up. And really, John still lacking a board right now. Yeah, when your board is too comfy and your opponent is properly getting rolling and you're already a game down, generally feels less than ideal, to put it mildly. Now, there, are, there, there aren't any other attackers right now. So that is the one thing for John. Maybe Zach whiffs a little bit. Now, speaking of, oh, that is a nice poker gear. Uh, excuse me, poker stop. You get an Ultra Ball and an Earthen Vessel, and you drop an Explorer's Guidance, but that's 10 more damage. I like how Zach's playing this as well. You're pretty content with your turn. Nothing's really going to change at this stage, but I like that he is diligently just getting more Ancient cards into that discard pile, because we saw John hedge that Iron Hands could take a turn and tank. Yes. So Zach going above and beyond to just throw more Ancient cards into that discard pile is still going to be really important here, as we also see the Ancient booster thrown onto the active Roaring Moon for good measure here. This is going to be nice. You've got a 200 HP Roaring Moon, and it's going to be taking your first prize. Your opponent is going to be going into their turn with one Comfey and nothing else on the board. So it's, it's right now. You need to start <laughs> piercing something together right now. You do have a Chorus's Experiment, and you also have a Lost Vacuum. So that is going to get you to a... Well, that's going to get you to seven, actually. Yep. Straight to seven, even if you get rid of your opponent's tool, which I'm suggesting maybe you should, <laughs> that's going to get you to seven cards in the Lost Zone and activate Mirage Gate. Looks like we're getting rid of Roaring Moon, and I believe it was Pokestop as well. Yes. There's already one in play, so that seems like a reasonable choice for John. And the Roaring Moon, well, it can Ooh. deal 200 damage. It can deal 220, in fact, whilst discarding a Pokestop. The problem here is you just showed your opponent Roaring Moon, and then you put it back. I think the only reason you would not is because you're going to try and attack with it this turn. Yes. You're, you're revealing it either way, essentially. So I okay, think it's fine. I'll give you that. With six ancient cards, I think it was six that Zach just counted out there. It is still going to be the Roaring Moon hitting the Lost Zone eventually for John. This time has been able to salvage that Roxanne that was critically lost in that game one. We yeah, can see a flower nice selecting as well for John. You're not playing all the comeback cards, but that one copy of Roxanne can be big. Put your opponent down to a two-card hand as long as they've taken at least three prizes. So we do see a ooh, Forest Seal Stone comes to the hand. Yeah, I believe there's Raikou V in the hand as well. There's the Cramorant attacker. Though. Yeah, we could just attach a retreat and go into Cramorant if we feel there's no better play here. No, the Raikou is coming into play, so we will be using this Forest Seal Stone more than likely and trying to get a more chunky attacker into the mix. So I've got Iron Hand stone. in hand. Iron that up a little bit here. So we're doing some Raikou <laughs> Mondo here. Man. Yeah. Oh, you're not going to make me do math. Lightning Rondo <laughs> does 20 damage base, plus 20 more for each bench Pokemon. Add up the bench Pokemon, add one, times it by two, add a zero on the end. That's how much damage you are doing. Is that how you, you do doing. the math, Rob? That's how you <laughs> do the math, That sounds super convoluted. <laughs> it's not convoluted. It works perfectly. <laughs> so now we've got, what have we got? We've got 140 damage yep. at yep. the moment, which Correct. is... Fine. Using your me using your formula, we have got to 140 damage. Exactly. <laughs> I feel pretty good about this, frankly. Yeah. But We're foresting for the uh, Mirage Gate by the looks of things here. From John. Yeah. Well, we'll need a Lost Vacuum if you're taking the KO this turn. Or, no, two more bench Pokemon won't do it and you haven't got enough. So you will need Lost Vacuum in order to get the KO here. You can't get enough bench Pokemon all by yourself. There is Lost Vacuum in hand. Oh, there we go then. But it could be something you hold. You can just use it for later, perhaps, as well. Sometimes, yes, it's great to get a mid-turn KO, but Zach has no energy on the board. So we're taking the KO this turn. You do that's four true. Sasada. Yeah, I, I think that's also very reasonable, as the Raikou V is powered up. 
thanks to the Mirage Gate. John also doing the totting up of damage. Just want to make sure that that Lightning Rondo is getting into the mix. Yeah, John's just sitting there going, right, six, add one, times two, <laughs> pop the zero on the end, 140. I need to get rid of that Ancient Booster. And he's moved the Lost Vacuum to the front. Yeah. Now it hits the board, and as suspected, we now have the perfect amount of mass to go and actually get that done. Not sure that was a real sentence, perfect but either way, mass. it's yeah. a KO. The perfect amount of mass, Joe. Ooh, a cheeky uh, draw one from Fleet footed there, got John another Mirage Gate for later, which oh, is nice. pretty handy as well. So that's going to help set up for next turn. And we do pick up the uh, Radiant Greninja from the prize cards, which is another crucial attacker that you can attempt to spam here. And there's nothing now preventing you. You've got the water energy or access there too. Sure one's in the discard, but you can recover that easy enough. You're playing your Super Rod, so you'll be fine. Interesting, Zach going into the Fluttermane to start off this turn. Maybe that indicates that Zach doesn't have an easy way to reach on this Raikou early. If we're looking to weave in a different type of attacker, perhaps this turn. And now you put this is this is where it gets awkward for Zach. Because you have no energy on the board. You need to play Professor Sada. If you're really stretching to get cards into the discard pile, then Explorer's Guidance a lot of the time becomes the better supporter card for actually getting cards into the discard. So now you're kind of in a situation where you need cards in the discard, Explorer's Guidance, but you need energy acceleration, Professor Sada, and you've given your opponent an awkward situation if you're John. Yep. That's why I loved taking the KO last turn. Sometimes I'm a big fan of being able to take that mid-turn KO and mm -hmm. ramp up that way. But I think here he's put Zach in an awkward situation. Yeah, I think Zach is holding on to poker gear. So there's no guarantee of the Sada, but still possible this turn. Can draw cards with Radiant Greninja first and has Pokestop available as well. I'm going to see that one first. Poker gear, Fluttermane, Explorer's Guidance. So two yeah. more cards in the discard that are ancient here. I don't have an accurate count for the second. Any chance you've yeah. been keeping up, Joe? No, I'm not sure just how many Zach has available right now. Can plus 20 from the hand if they choose to get rid of the Explorer's Guidance, but it would be risky. So we are just going to get rid of an Ultra Ball here with the Urban Vessel. A little bit surprising that Zach didn't use this before the Poker Stop, because obviously these are cards you can't get for free from Poker Stop, and they're not ancient cards either. I would have liked to have seen the Vessel first but possibly Zach making the decision after seeing the poker stop. Sometimes information is more valuable than statistical best odds each time. No, absolutely good point. Knowing more can often be good. So there's an energy discarded with Greninja here. Yep. Draw two with concealed cards. That is going to get you a little more information, little few cards. Fluttermane and Super Rod, I believe that was. It's yeah. not what you're looking for. Here comes the poker stop, and he kind of needs Sada if you're going to fire off an attack this turn. And it's a miss. Oh, no. This is a big break for John. Kind of what we needed. Zach didn't miss a beat in that first game. But now we've had a big nine-card dig with the Greninja into Poker Gear, whiffing on a Professor Sada. So Zach is going to have to settle for an Explorer's Guidance and just take a turn off, attaching to a Roaring Moon and passing. Yeah, and that is not ideal. And of course, John here, we know the numbers are working out quite nicely. So you can even try and get some gusting going on, taking out some yeah. more Roaring Moon. If there's a manual attachment, take out that Roaring Moon. Oh, look at that. Just to the insult or injury, you then see two of the Sada <laughs> in the six from the Explorer's Guidance. It's always oh. the way, Ross. Oh, absolutely. It's um, pretty much guaranteed. You kind of <laughs> have to take them both because they're really good cards you're going to need. Yeah. A few important item cards also hitting the discard pile now for Zach. Got rid of a Super Rod as well as a Counter Catcher. That can be a big deal. And you're going to go behind on prizes, so yeah. actually the losing that Counter Catcher becomes a much bigger deal. Zach's just going to leave the um, Fluttermane in the active position. Seems like a reasonable choice, to be honest with you. That Midnight Fluttering can still be a little disruptive for John. Yeah, but all you really need here is... Well, actually, right now you need nothing. The KO yep. is on the board. But then the question becomes, can you get a Pokemon? Can you get a Prime Catcher? Can you get a Boss's Orders? Now we're up to 160 damage. And now we see the Concealed Cards getting a couple more. Pokestop and Hisuian Heavy Ball were the pickups. I'd like to see John weave in the Mirage Gate for this Greninja and use Moonlight Shuriken this turn. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah, I think that's still the highest tempo you can do. And now that Zach's got so many more Ancient cards in that discard pile, you want this Raikou V out of the line of fire, I think. Yeah, and you would get the KO on the Flutter main, so you would get a KO as well as yeah. spreading damage. So all you really do is get an extra 90 on the bench and take a two prize around the active. Yeah. 
I feel like you have to take out this Fluttermane as well because John's just seen it. There's still two, your other two Mirage Gate in those prize cards. So you really want to access prize cards immediately here if you can. Can't you really need one Mirage Gate and a yeah. Water Energy from the hand. To what, now there was a Water Energy in the discard a minute ago. Ooh, interesting. So it looks like it's accepting that Raikou might be just getting into the mix here. If we're manually attaching to this Comfey. Yeah, yeah Mirage Gates. At least they're sort of towards the top. That's handy. Shuffled via the Hisuian Heavy Ball, of course. But with two Mirage Gate in there and he did trying to double. I mean, is it even possible to double Mirage Gate? Do we have one already on the Raikou? Uh, yeah, we've already spent a Mirage Gate. Ooh, yeah. there's a couple hits from the Pokestop. The Prime Catcher's interesting. You could now pivot your Comfey that you attach to and t take out a Roaring Moon if you would prefer. I want to get the Roaring Moon here. Yeah. And I, I know that there are Sada in hand now for Zack, and you kind of had to assume that was going to be the case. But you're still going after the energy, and you're just making your opponent do more stuff. John agrees with me here. Up comes a Roaring Moon. You can Flower Selecting because there's no Fluttermane in the active. Get yourself an extra card. Get one more in the Lost Zone, which does get you closer than Sableye. And we've got all oh, water energy in a switch. <laughs> Come on. Straight away, John has to have a think. It would be nice to preserve the energy that's currently on your Comfey, but also conserving water energy also seems valuable. It's so difficult because the rinse and repeat Greninja strategy hinges on you finding Mirage Gate from your prize cards. So it may, yeah, it's going to keep that line available. Going to loss on a switch instead. We're also going to see a pal pad from John. I think the thing here is that Fluttermane's got 90 HP, so you will get an actual KO with yeah. Greninja as well as getting some damage down. And I think for me, that makes a big difference. I agree, as John is probably just forced to retreat into Raikou here and just deal with it. You can Cramorant Swing if you really want to and just not leave this two prizer in the active position, but I don't think it's as valuable as going back into this. You even get a free card with Fleet Footed now that we've pushed this Fluttermane out of the way. No, I do quite like this. You're trying to get resources at this point. You want to get prizes, you get an extra card. And the other thing is, of course, we want the Mirage Gate off the prizes, which it looks like, yes, yes. you do hit it, as expected. And that's a big thing, because now you've got the potential for something like Raiding Greninja next turn. As for Zach, we know that there's at least Sada in hand. So, and picks up a Coridon. That's actually pretty handy. Maybe that could be a second Pokemon you could attach to this turn. You could, of course, still draw cards with Radiant Greninja and look to Pokestop to find just more Roaring Moon. Yeah, we're going to start with a Pokestop here for Zack. We want to always be attaching to our Roaring Moon. That's always the trick here, as we get to keep a superior energy retrieval. And I think Zack has to already have the KO established here with Vengeance Fletching with so many cards in that discard pile now for him. Yeah, 13 is the number you're looking for to put you up to 200. Looks like there's probably oh, nice. that many. Picked up another Roaring Moon. That's exactly what we want to see. So we can use Asada for the full value here and get double Roaring Moon with energy on both. And is holding on to Superior Energy Retrieval as well, which is required for our turn attachment. So Zach doing a good job here of re-establishing multiple threats. And that's the thing. We just saw a big miss, a turn taken off, essentially, because you didn't have enough energy and you couldn't find that Professor Sada. You want to put yourself in a position where Professor Sada is a nice little bonus to set up for future turns rather than a necessity to get an attack off this turn. That is a very, very big difference between the two. Zach's just done the math, and I believe we're there at 200, even whilst putting some Roaring Moon back into the deck with the Super Rod. So that's pretty handy has the nest ball as well, so can establish this Roaring Moon that's just been shuffled back into the deck. So Zach doing a good job of just maintaining that chain of attackers. Really, the questions are being thrown at John each turn. Zach simply just has to keep churning these Roaring Moon. And that's the thing, right? Zach is a presumptive favorite in this matchup. One game one, coming into this, looking to close out the series, get to that magic 19 match points that will be enough to get into day two, and is just constantly saying, go on then, John, deal with this. All right, <laughs> fine, you did. Now deal with this. Here comes a Professor Sada's Vitality. We're going to see presumably an energy onto the active Roaring Moon and one onto one of the bench. Yep. We will need an attachment from hand, but we're pretty sure Zach has done the mass here and will be able to get this KO on the active. Oh, great Tusk is in the hand. It's not going <laughs> to do much this matchup, but it's adorable and I love it, so it's worth pointing out. It certainly could get hit with superior energy retrieval right about now and find its way into the discard pile. <laughs> I think Zach is holding on to a Darkness Energy there as well. There is one in hand, yeah. yeah. So you could even hold this Superior Energy Retrieval. The upside of using Superior now is you put more Dark Energy in the hand just in case you are hit with Roxanne, because Zach will be going down to three prize cards this turn. 
once he's KO'd this Raikou V. And Darkness Energy are actually just very handy cards. You want to constantly have manual attachments, and also they're great for your Radiant Greninja. No, uh, they really are. Here's one going on to the active. The Warcourse couple more cards now that are ancient in the discard pile. So this is going pretty nicely. Oh, and a counter Ooh. catcher onto the Iron Hands. I don't want your Ico. I want your Iron Hands. That is more annoying for me. Ancient Booster Energy Capsule onto your bench. And here we go. And those extra two cards from the Superior Energy Retrieval might have been what put you over the edge and opened up this play. Both players counting, hopefully, but hoping for very different results. Yeah. But it is enough, and away goes the Iron Hands. Yeah, I think it's actually kind of smart. Even though it doesn't feel like it's a big threat, that Iron Hands, obviously it can become a threat that can really snowball if you, ever you have an off turn. So Zach trying to make it that little bit more difficult for John in the first place. But also, this might be the only turn that Zach is actually behind on prize cards again. So that counter catcher would end up just being like a dead card for the remainder of the game. So just getting it out of the mix now makes a good amount of sense as John once again, now back against the wall, is one prize card down. As we see a manual attachment onto this Comfey. We do have Mirage Gates available, but Raikou certainly shouldn't be attacking right now. Maybe you are still getting Greninja into the mix, but you're having to spend more and more Mirage Gates. Things are getting, again, pretty awkward here. See a buddy buddy pop in, but that can only get 70 HP or less. It's not getting an attacker, I'll tell you that much. There are no energy in the deck either. Now Don is just going to Roxanne. What you've been calling for, Joe, all series here. Yeah. Trying to make sure that you put your opponent down to a low hand size. And the theory here is quite simple. You play this, put your opponent down to a low hand, try and take out some of their Pokemon and give them a lot to do and very little with which to do it. Problem is, we've got a Roaring Moon established. A Roaring <laughs> yes. Moon on the bench has got an energy and an Ancient Booster energy capsule. Even if you take out the Roaring Moon, Zach just needs an energy or a Professor Sada or a Superior Energy Retrieval. Yeah. And what are you taking out the Roaring Moon with? I mean, if you're going to get the KO, it's going to be with Raikou, but... If Roaring Moon had enough to KO the Iron Hand, it definitely has enough to KO the Raikou. These are all uh, great questions right now of what else John can piece together. Well, possibly the Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX has a slightly higher amount of hit points that we can use instead here. Yeah, that will go up. That's got 260s that would force. I mean, if we assume there was exactly enough to KO the Iron Hand, then that would mean free Ancient or just play Kieran. Yeah, that's also still available for Zach but again, would also have to find it in combination with an energy attachment. That seasoned skill ability from Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX, very similar to Radiant Charizard's Excited Heart. But the good news is uh, the Blood Moon Ursa Luna can get even cheaper as it could attack for zero energy because it currently has an all colorless attack cost. Yeah, that's quite nice. That Blood Moon Ursa Luna, one of the big new cards in Twilight Masquerade. I like this very much indeed. And, I mean, right now it is a two energy attack and it's any energy, Oof. so one Mirage Gate would do it, but it looks... No gates, no. Just going to oh. have to go in with the Raikou here. That's not good. It's not what we're looking for, any road. Well, I think the hope is that you send Zack down to one prize, then go with the Blood Moon Ursa Luna and you've taken out, ideally, a couple Roaring Moon in a row, and then it's difficult. And we know that we're already there. Now, we're at least hitting Ooh. 240 here. Zach has a poker gear in hand. Ooh, picks up the Explorer's Guidance. That's huge as well. The priority would be a Professor Sada, so that's why the poker gear is going to get swung into here. Let's see, seven cards. There's the oh. Kieran. There's the Professor Sada. That's huge for Zach. And I think John knows. You can see the expression on his face that that is what he wanted to avoid desperately. Zach's going to get out to one prize remaining here, and he's going to put himself in a similar situation again. And actually, if he does draw an energy off to Professor Sada, then he can get yeah. both the Roaring Moon rolling this turn. Yeah. So he needs nothing next turn, because actually, you've needed potentially three cards. Well, that's already two. So... You're going to easily be going Blood Moon is where I'm going with this. Yes. So an energy attachment here would be huge. There is one in hand. So that means both Roaring Moon are going to be up and rolling. Oh, Zach can also ultra all away to Fluttermane here. That would put him easily in range of Blood Moon Ursa Luna. I think he's done basically everything he needs to from his checklist now. I mean, to he close is out at, this game. He's at most one card away. At yeah. most one card away. And if you take a KO, two cards go in the discard. Zach I don't think to... Zach even needs to do anything here except attach that basic darkness. 
and that puts him in a redonkulous position to be finishing out this game. But I think you're right. I think you Why do not? go for the flood to me because you don't need them. Yeah. But this yeah, has it, shut so many doors for John now. And John's done the maths like we have. We know at this stage that Blood Moon Ursa Luna. Look at the deck. It's all out, Ross. <laughs> it's all out. He <laughs> doesn't need anything. So many base energy in there. There's another Sada. There's a Kieran. I think one of the only bad draws now is, ironically, your ace spec. <laughs> Just in case you have a too few cards to use the effect. Yeah, it's pretty terrible right now, honestly, but it doesn't oh, matter. Man. Here comes a KO on the Raikou. What can John do? He's got to take a prize with something that won't get returned KO'd. And, oh, yeah, we know that the Roaring Moon is doing enough damage to KO anything on John's board. And if you think those two statements don't match, you're absolutely <laughs> right. They don't match. And that is very bad news for John. We have Mirage Gate. We have Boss's Orders. So you can bring up the Radiant Greninja and just hope you're dodging basic energy at this stage. These are the low outs that John has to play towards. Yeah. We know that, that, that Zach basically has it locked up right now. But John has to make these plays. There is the psych energy for the Sableye, and we are at 10 in the Lost Zone. I mean, this is, this is it. You cannot actually take a KO. Taking a KO would be a terrible idea here because it's just going to get returned KO. So what you have to do is bring up the Greninja, start dropping damage with Sableye, and hope Zack never hits any kind of switching card, basic energy or Kieran. So we are going to see the Lost Mine, but Zack's already got two energy in hand. Yeah, Zack's chilling. He doesn't have the energy, oh, no. but he has the Explorer. And that, that draws the whole deck. <laughs> he picked up the Roaring Moon for a second. I thought that was in his hand, but it's not. So yeah, that Explorer's Guidance is going to make it happen. So John's thinking, and John doesn't know this, so he's got to think this through. He's got to put the damage as if the game is not sewn up. Takes a prize off of Fluttermane and drops some damage down onto Roaring Moon. Oh, oh there's, there's the, the energy. Zach can retreat and attack and takes the game two, or takes a match, two games to zero. And Ancient Box looks like we're seeing it in day two, Joe. Zach made it look all so easy. The matchup is favorable, but I think we have to give credit where credit is due. Zach showing up with the crowd. He's got all the fans out there, obviously a well.